Amen. Good morning, church. It's good to see all of you guys this morning. And, uh, and uh, how many of you were here yesterday? We had a healing training. Wow. Yeah, we had several that were here and several people that were healed as well. So Jesus is the healer. Amen. 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 So just uh, if you would turn to the person next to you, give him a big high five in Jesus name. Give him a big high five in Jesus name. Say, I love you. And Jesus loves you. And, and everybody say this together. Say, I'm strong. I'm smart, I'm blessed, I'm good looking, and I'm a major blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now turn to the person next to you say, you look better right now than you did when you woke up this morning. I knew if the first one didn't get you, then the, the last one would, so... Anyway, no, it's great to see all of you guys today, and uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, right? Yes. What a beautiful day it is outside. Man, it is amazing. Praise the Lord. And so um, I've uh, known um, Pastor John and Leslie for some time now and have just always enjoyed coming here, and, and uh, we get to reflect back on uh, John and Pastor John when even before Leslie came along and uh, we were and some of our kids played together and different things and so uh, it's just always I just feel like when I come here I feel like I'm coming back home so I just appreciate all of you guys and all the friendships that have uh, formed over the years and um, and so it's just good to be back and so this morning I've got a special message that I want to share with you and and uh, I believe that some of you are going to be really shocked about what's happening right now uh, maybe nothing would shock you. I don't know, but <laughs> but anyway, there's some things that uh, you know. What I w what I'm doing now is not anything that I was doing in January. Um, in fact, this whole year has this been an interesting year, right? It's been an interesting year for everybody, and yet God has sustained us. God has taken care of us. God has provided for us. How many of y'all are a testimony to that fact that God has provided? God has sustained you, all right? And so to God be all the glory. Hallelujah. And so um, this morning, I want to share some things with you in my heart and just share with you what God is doing. And, uh, and so if you have your Bibles or if you have your devices, all right, you can open to uh, Isaiah chapter 19 and also to Ephesians chapter 4. And so this morning, I want to talk to you about aligning yourself with the call of God. Aligning yourself with the call of God. You know, this year has been a really interesting time, an interesting year. And I know uh, for our nation, as well as other nations, they've been on shutdown. But how many know that God never shuts down? Amen. And what I have found over the last several months is that God has been moving even more, even an acceleration, okay, an acceleration. He's been moving even more, even when it seems like other people uh, or other nations have shut down. And so um, today we're going to look at um, Isaiah chapter 19. And this chapter is concerning Egypt. Um, and I just returned from Egypt a few weeks ago. Um, and then we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4. In fact, let's just go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. We'll go there first. And so Paul says here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, he says, he says, Brethren, I exhort you to walk worthy of the calling with which you have been called. Everybody say the calling. The calling. This morning we're going to talk about the calling. You might say, what is the calling? Well, number one, I believe that we're all called into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I have found over this time that... Um, during the season where uh, the idols of America came down and we've been on shutdown, the Lord has been, been calling me to a higher place. And he, he, he told me that, listen, uh, Brian, if you don't make some changes during this time, you're going to miss the boat. You're going to miss the, the purpose in all of this. Not that uh, all of this you know, came from the Lord. It, you know, sickness and viruses come from the devil. But how many know that what the devil meant for bad God can use for good. Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about this morning, all right? And so we're all called into a relationship, and God continues to call us to a higher place, into a deeper place. 
All right, the second thing that we're called to is we're called to sanctification. We're called to renew our mind. We're called to become more like Christ. All right, how many know that's a continual process? Are y'all in a continual process this morning? <laughs> is there anybody here that you feel like you have arrived? Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, and then the third thing that we're really called to do is that there's a plan, there's a purpose, there's a destiny that God created each and every one of us for. How many of y'all believe that today? Yes. That you're not here by accident, that, uh, that God has created you for a, a divine assignment, a divine purpose, and, and really uh, we're coming into a new season. So what you did before may not be what you do in this new season. And I believe that we're coming into a tremendous decade, a decade of difference, a decade like it's going to be no other. And God is going to move so supernaturally, all right, it, we're, we're, we're not even, I mean, we can't even fathom uh, the things that God is getting ready to do and that he's getting ready to move in the earth. And, you know, I always say, you know, hey, uh, there's, a, there's another name for God, and it's Jehovah Sneaky. <laughs> So just as much as you, you, you thought you knew about God, guess what? He shows up and with a few surprises, okay? And so everybody say Jehovah Sneaky, right? And so, so, uh, so God has got some surprises, some things up his sleeve for this next uh, decade. And so, um, you know, four or five years ago, the Lord gave us a new assignment. Uh, my wife and I, we had been traveling in different countries and around the world. Uh, we've traveled in about 60 countries now. Um, and so we'd been in Europe, South America, Central America, India, uh, gosh, you know, Africa, you know, many, many a number of places. And so about four or five years ago, the Lord said, I, ha I have a new assignment. And I said, okay, Lord, what is it? He said, I, I want you, uh, the new assignment, I want you to reach the Muslim world for Jesus. Amen. And of course, I came home and shared that news with my wife. And she said, hmm, Okay. <laughs> so how does one reach the Muslim world? I said, well, only God knows. I can't just get on an airplane and show up over there. And so, but through a, just a series of divine appointments, the Lord just began to orchestrate and order our steps super, super, so supernaturally, okay? Uh, I mean, to get over there, it has to be pretty supernaturally anyway. And so, uh, so the Lord opened doors into Turkey, into Jordan, into Saudi Arabia and uh, um, Pakistan, just a number of places, okay? Doors just begin to fly open, okay? And so as I would go into the Muslim world, I began to realize, well, this is such a new day, it's such a new season. Uh, as I began to travel and look at the mosque, the mosques are shutting down in Turkey. Uh, people aren't going to the mosque anymore. Uh, the Muslims, when you talk to them, they're so tired of Islam, they don't want anything to do with Islam anymore. And I was like, wow, this is a new day. And I'd go in their homes, I'd go into the homes of the Muslim people and I'd share the gospel. And, and they would just sit, 30 to 40 of them in, in a house and, and they would just weep and they would cry he, hearing the testimonies that I would share about Jesus Christ. And they would say, we, we, we don't know that kind of God. We, we don't know a good God. We don't, we've never heard such testimonies that, that God would do, heal you of cancer or that God would do this for your son or for your daughter and 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 so they would sit in these rooms and just weep and cry and they said well gosh Allah has not been like that to us that's that's not a God that we're familiar with okay but if, if you're telling us the truth that Jesus is who he says he is we, we want to receive Jesus hallelujah so you could you could lead a, a whole family 30 to 40 you know in, in every day in, in a house okay and by the next day they were going to another house and they were sharing the good news about Jesus Christ you know as I begin to travel into different villages uh, people in the villages would come out and they would say oh you must be the one I am saying, what do you mean you, you're a you're a follower of Jesus you you must be the one because several months ago you know our whole village had a visitation with Jesus Christ and Jesus appeared to us in the village and he showed us the nail prints in his hands and he said I am the way the truth and the life and he said uh, if you believe in me then you'll have eternal life and so they said that entire night the entire village got saved they all had a visitation with Jesus and Jesus said in the coming weeks and months I'll send people 
who will be my followers who will come and tell you more about Jesus, okay? And so as I began to travel all through the Middle East, I was just so shocked and so amazed at uh, the openness of the Muslim world and Muslims that are coming to Christ. And it, it was reported several years ago that 10 to 15,000 ISIS leaders had had visitations with Jesus and it completely wiped out the ranks of the, of the ISIS network, okay? All right. And so, I mean, we're, we're talking about a brand new season. We're talking about a season of harvest. We're talking about an, uh, an acceleration of the harvest like we have never seen before. And so when I was reading in Isaiah chapter 60, uh, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Many of us know that verse of Scripture. How many of you all know that verse of Scripture? For the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. And so in verse number 7 and 8, it talks about the sons of Ishmael, Kedar and Nabiath, that they will come in like a mighty cloud. And people will say, where did this cloud come from? The Muslims represent 1.6, 1. 1 billion souls. And they are coming into the kingdom and coming into the kingdom fast. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, can we give it up for Jesus this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we're, we're coming into a new decade, a new season, folks. I believe it's going to be the, one of the greatest decades of all time, if not the greatest. So guess what? God has saved us the best for last. Turn to the person next to say, you God saved the best for last, right? Hallelujah. And so, um, so back in January, uh, my wife and I and a team, we were invited to Egypt by President Sisi. He gave us... He, 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 gave us the first ever government-sanctioned Christian meetings. Now, up until this time, you know, people could meet underground or churches could meet in houses or underground. But this is coming from the top. President Sisi said, I will set up, we'll set up venues and it will be government-sanctioned, government-approved, all right, to be able to come here, preach the gospel, preach Jesus Christ in this Muslim world. And he said to us, he said, if these meetings go well, all the, uh, all the, well, first of all, he said, uh, with these meetings, all the eyes of the Muslim world will be watching these meetings. If these meetings go well, then the doors will fly open. If the meetings don't go so well, the doors will shut tight. <coughs> well, we had no indication, no clue what exactly what that meant, but we knew it must be fairly significant, right? And so we came in January, preached the gospel. As we, the first day as we set out to leave the hotel, uh, uh, we were, um, we, there was vehicles. There was uh, vehicles that were outside the hotel, military, Secret Service, all right, um, p police, all right, uh, this whole convoy of vehicles. And I was thinking, what, what in the world? What, what is this going on outside the hotel? And then the Secret Service agent comes over to us and said, these, these are for your team. President Sisi arranged for your whole team to have a convoy of total protection every day for the entire week. And so President Sisi was making sure that we had total protection everywhere that we went. So we actually had his same Secret Service agents that were with us, okay? So we went to the first meeting, okay? It was a, a building about this big, several hundred uh, people. And just a, a year or two before, everyone in, in that church, uh, they, they had been in prison for their faith. And so as the meeting was getting ready to start, all of a sudden, 22, tw excuse me, 21 Secret Service agents just started filling up the room. And we're like, what is going on here? And then in walked in the ambassador to Saudi Arabia, the ambassador to Qatar, the ambassador to Kuwait, the ambassador to Libya, the ambassador to Iraq, all right? The ambassador to this, the ambassador to Bahrain, all right? And so all of a sudden, about six or eight ambassadors began to walk in the room, and they, they took their seat. Why did they come? President Sisi had invited them. They, come to, they came to see what a Christian service would look like in a Muslim nation. And there that day, they heard the gospel, all right? 
And, and before the service was even over, they were running over and they said, you have an open door to Saudi Arabia. You have an open door to Libya. We want your team to come. We want you to come preach the gospel. You have an open door to this Islamic nation and that Islamic nation. And so just like that, the doors flew wide open into different nations. Hallelujah. We're talking about an acceleration of the harvest. We're talking about a supernatural work that God is doing in the earth. Hallelujah. And so then, of course, we came back and there and there was COVID. <laughs> and then a week later, I get this call and this guy calls me from Egypt and he says, I want to meet with you. I said, no, I didn't know him. I never met him. Um, I called him back and the secretary said, yeah, he's coming to Washington, D.C. He wants to see if you can meet. I said, okay. She said, let me send you his resume and his itinerary. So as I was looking over his resume and itinerary, I realized he, was a, he had just stepped down as a member of the Egyptian parliament. And now he's, he just uh, was elected uh, yesterday as a senator. And so I was looking at his itinerary and I saw that he was in some meetings with senators in Washington, D.C. And I was looking at that itinerary. All of a sudden the Lord said, you need to be in this one particular meeting. I mean, it just jumped out off the page, and I, I, I called a secretary back. I said, I'll meet him in Washington, D.C. If, if I can be his guest in this one particular meeting with the government. I said, you know, I don't have an invitation, um, but if it's okay with him, can I be his guest? And so she said, yeah, we'd be fine. So I came into this meeting, okay, and government leaders, senators uh, of our country, they were talking about international religious freedom talking about how to get other countries involved in, in uh, helping international uh, religious freedom you know, around the world. And so um, at the end of the meeting, I ran up to these senators and I said, is there anything, are you guys doing anything to, in the Muslim world? Are you doing anything in the Middle East? Well, they looked at me like I had three heads. <laughs> like, what do you mean in the Middle East, the Muslim world? We're, we're just trying to get you know, nations in Europe or nations, you know, in Africa, you know, to adopt religious freedom and this and that. I'm like, well, what about the Middle East? What about the Muslim world? So, you know, I shared with them, you know, hey, I just got back from the Middle East and I have open doors, you know, this and that and that. And they're like, well, you know, you're a missionary. I'm well, yeah, I know I'm not a senator. <laughs> so they took my information and Two months later, I get a call. They said, let's talk. Let's talk. All right? And I said, okay. So we got on a Zoom call. I was able to talk to other government leaders, share with them everything that was going on, you know, that we had been experiencing in the, in the Middle East and how the Muslims, how it's a new day, it's a new awakening, all right, among the Muslim world. And, and they, 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 they said, okay, that's great, you know, and, and they began to put together some things. Now, let me just kind of share a couple things that are going on right now. In June of this year, President Trump signed an executive order. That executive order is this, that going forward, part of the United States foreign policy will be the spread of religious freedom. Part of our foreign policy will be the spread or the, you know, the expansion of religious freedom around the world. That means part of our foreign policy to the Muslim world will be you will have to help spread Christianity. So this is going to open the doors massively around the world. Many of you know how President Trump brokered the deal with Israel and Bahrain and uh, UAE and, and, and uh, Sudan. And, and uh, just as soon as he did that, then all of a sudden there were seven other Muslim countries saying, well, what about us? Well, how, can, how can we get involved in this? All right. And, and so this, this whole situation led to the last meeting in August uh, on a Zoom call. The government said, would you be willing to uh, help co-write a business deal between Egypt and the United States? I'm like, yes. <laughs> And I'm thinking, you know what? It's been a little while since I had my business degree. But, you know, I knew that it was the Lord. And so uh, I'll just share with you what, what's, what's been in the works is that um, there are deals that are in the works between the United States and other countries. All right. 
And, and, and President Trump has had this initiative that he's going to promise other nations economic prosperity if they will open their doors to Christianity. So for the atheist world, for the Muslim world, if they will open their doors to Christianity and allow the spread of Christianity, evangelism, new churches, all right, I mean, you talk about the spreading of the gospel. If they will open their doors to the spreading of the gospel, then we will promise them economic prosperity. Hallelujah. And guess what? They're on board. They are on board. They realize, you know what? We, even though we were raised to hate Americans, we realize that we can't trust China. We know that Ch China will take us over. We can't trust Russia because Russia will take us over. But you know what? We can trust America because America keep it, keeps it word and America will never take us over. And if we want to do well, if we want to prosper, then guess what? We need America's help to prosper. Come on, church. Can we give it up for Jesus one more time? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so I'm finding myself in an interesting position. But you know what? I see this happening all over the place. God is positioning people, moving people. So when it looked like the world was shut down, guess what? God was never shut down. It was like pieces of, of a chess table. That, you know, he was just moving. You know, uh, we have friends of ours whose daughter, about two months ago, she got a call from the White House. And the White House says, would you come work in the White House? She's like, what? <laughs> like, where'd this come from? Uh, she, How did you get my name? How did you get my number? They said, well, President Trump said, call Liberty University and find the best students that Liberty University has because I want Christians in my administration. Wow. Hallelujah. All right. I have another friend of mine who was asked to be an ambassador. All right. And it, and he, and it started with about 30 some people who were uh, you know, vying for the job. It got down to him and another person. President Trump calls him and says, I want you to be my ambassador. And, you know, he's, he's been uh, working with government, but he's also been a missionary for many, many years. And he said, well, I, I, I appreciate, uh, the, you know, um, the invitation. I appreciate uh, you asking me. Um, and he said, uh, but you know what? I just know that the Lord has some other things as well uh, for me to do. And he says, I know this other person that it's got down to, to, to me and him. And I know this other person, he's a really strong Christian, and he would do just as good a job as I would do. And President Trump said, yes, I know that, because I only want Christians to be my ambassadors. Now, when you have a president who is wanting Christians, come on, to be in his cabinet, like Ben Carson, Mike Pence, Mike Pompeo, all right, when you want a president who wants ambassadors, people who work in the White House, all right, to be Christians. You know, it's showing me something that, uh, it reminds me of this uh, passage in Psalm 102, verse 13. It says, uh, for, for the Lord says, for I will arise. I will arise and have mercy on Zion. For the set time has come. How I many of there's set times on God's timetable? And God has a way of appointing people, positioning people, putting people in, in places that they never, ever expected, okay? All right? You know, um, there was a friend of mine that had to go to D.C. He's a missionary, and he had to go fill out some paperwork, and he, 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 he'd never heard of this building. It's called the J Building. And so he was trying to find his way, and he finally found the J Building, you know? And he uh, walked down the hallway, and he was looking at the, the offices, and so... You know, he knocked on this one door he was supposed to go to, and, uh, he, he, and so he walks in, and there's this lady sitting there at her desk, and she has this whiteboard, and on this whiteboard is a scripture verse. So he walks in, and he's like, hey, you know, like, hey, uh, my name is so-and-so, I, and I have a meeting with you. Look, it, hey, I like your whiteboard. You know, I, I know that scripture. It's one of my favorite scripture verses. And, and, and he just happens to say, you know, it's good to have... I'm so glad to have Christians, you know, uh, working in a government building. And she looked at them and she said, yeah, they don't call this the J building for nothing. Uh -huh. 
She said every person who works in this building is a Christian. Hallelujah. I was traveling in Washington, D.C. Uh, several months ago, and I, I was in this meeting, and um, I met this guy. He said, uh, hey, I'm a pastor of, this ch of a church in Washington, D.C. He said, hey, you, you, you're invited to come anytime you want to come. I said, okay, that'd be great. And uh, he said, well, guess where my church meets? I said, well, I don't really know Washington, D.C. all that well, you know. <laughs> so I, I have no clue. He said, no, come on, guess. Guess where my church meets? I, you know, take a wild guess. I'm like, I, really, I, I have no clue. Okay. He said, yeah, we meet in Nancy Pelosi's office. I knew that would get a reaction. He said, yeah, I asked her a couple years ago if we could use, there's, there's a, her office and there's a parlor. It's a bigger room, okay, if we could use the parlor. And she said, sure. So, so that church meets every Wednesday night in Nancy Pelosi's office. So I thought to myself, you know what? Nancy Pelosi doesn't have a chance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're talking about an awakening. A rude awakening for some. We're talking about a great awakening, a global awakening. You know, I read that scripture years ago in Haggai where it says, uh, in that day, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. I remember for years wondering, what in the world does that mean an earthquake? Does that mean, I mean, like, I could not imagine what, what, what would it take for, like, everything that could be shaken, could, you know, would be shaken? Like, what? And now, after we've seen this whole year, yeah. now I understand Amen. how a virus or how, you know, a, 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 a certain agenda or whatever could, could literally, you know, uh, impact nations of the world. But I tell you what, that's nothing compared to the gospel that's getting ready to shake every nation around the world. Can you say amen this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, uh, in Isaiah chapter 19, verse 1, it says, Behold, the Lord rides on a swift cloud into Egypt. Now, I don't know if the Lord's riding on a Harley, <laughs> but he is riding into Egypt. President Sisi is calling on Christianity. Other nations are calling on Christianity. I met with a, a Muslim sheik in New York. He had just gotten born again. And uh, he said, I, I need you. I, I need you. I need you and any of your friends. We, we need the gospel. We need Christianity. He said, I, I was, I, I was, I'm in the royal family. I'm a sheik you know, a king of this Muslim country. And, and uh, I was being raised to be a, an honor to our, to our family name. And so I was raised to be this Muslim imam. Uh, and he said, I kept going through all the training and all the, you know, uh, the preparations and the schooling and all that. And he said, every, t every time I go to one level and another level, he said, I had more questions than I had answers. So he'd ask, he said, well, I asked the, the, the imam, so... So according to the Quran, you know, what does this mean? And they'd say, only Allah knows. He's like, only Allah knows? What good is that? Amen. Right? So every time he kept trying to go the hierarchy of education, he kept saying, so, so uh, what does that mean? Well, only Allah knows. So one day he's in a taxi, and uh, he's sitting in the back seat, and he sees uh, the taxi driver has a, has a Bible on the dashboard. So he says to the taxi driver, hey, is that a Bible? He goes, yeah. He said, can you read it and understand it? And the taxi driver says, yeah, of course I can. He said, pull over on the side of the road. Read me something and tell me about it. Explain it to me. Well, he didn't know at the time, but the taxi driver was the Southern Baptist missionary. It was a setup. So they pull over the side of the road like, the, like in the book of Acts, the Ethiopian eunuch, you know, show me, what do these scriptures mean? So he turns to John 3, 16. 
tells them the, about how God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, you know, and he, and he, and he shared with them the, the four spiritual laws and the gospel, you know, and that, that, that man just, they sat on the side of the road for two hours. Just the missionary just pouring over the scriptures. And he said, wow, you can actually read the Bible and understand it. He said, wow, in that day, in that taxi, guess what? That man, that Muslim sheik, that Muslim king, come on now, received the word of the Lord and he was born again. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on. Let's give it up for Jesus this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so I'm giving you the real news. This is all a setup. Things that have been in motion are a setup for what is to come. I was on a Zoom call with Secretary Pompeo about uh, two months ago, and uh, he was sharing with a lot of pastors. And he said this, he said, three years ago, uh, while he was in his prayer closet, it was, it was like the presence of the Lord showed up. Well, I'm like, this is a government call. <laughs> I mean, I, I started listening a lot. Like, and he said, yeah, it was like as if Jesus or the presence of God showed up in that place. And, and God downloaded uh, the, 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 the agenda. God downloaded to me the, um, the, the concept, the, uh, the ideas going forward on how uh, our nation is going to uh, handle human rights abuses in other nations. All right. And while, and I was listening and I was uh, look at that and I said, wow. I said, you know what? Our prayers are working. Yes. How many of y'all pray for the, our leaders, pray for our yes. nations and pray for people in authority, you know, and we need to keep our prayers going because I'm telling you, I've been on other Zoom calls uh, President Sisi was, was shared, hey, listen, I had a, dreams. I'm having dreams with Jesus. I'm having visitations with Jesus. And Jesus has showed me that, that Egypt is going to be uh, turned around and things are going to happen. And he said, I see uh, Muslims converting to Christianity and thousands and tens of thousands of Christians will be market, marking, marching in the streets and they will be saying, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord, okay? You know? And so you think that your prayers you know, can't do much. I tell you what, keep praying, keep praying because our leaders are getting insights. Our leaders are getting ideas. I mean, you know, that, the, that the cities that we see today will not be the cities that we see tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, it's not about a person. It's not a male a man. It's not even about a party. It's all about a decade where God's agenda wants to unfold. God, God wants to invade this nation. God wants to in, inject himself into our nation once again. I believe it's time for America to be reborn. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give it up. America to be reborn. Only it's going to be greater than ever. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, I know they say that you might, you're going to get so tired of winning, but I'll never get tired of winning. How about you? I, I know, Leslie, I know some of you like to win, all right? <laughs> and we are all more than conquerors. We are all winners through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me just go back here in Isaiah 19. At verse 21, it says, In that day... The Lord will be known in Egypt, and the Egyptians will know the Lord. Everybody say amen. amen. Verse 23 says, In that day there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria. The Assyrians will come into Egypt and Egyptians into Assyria. That highway is being built right now. President Sisi hired Christians two and a half years ago to build the highway. The international highway is being built right now. And, and it's going to be a center of commerce, center of business, center of the gospel going forth uh, into the Islamic world. Actually, did you know this, that Egypt Arabic is the only accepted Arabic among the Arab, Arab nations. Egypt plays a huge role in the last days. So for some of you who have thought, well, what about Egypt? I thought that was Moses. I think it was Old Testament, right? Israelites. Yeah, it was. 
But guess what? In the last days, um, there's a saying in the, in, the, in the Muslim world, as Egypt goes, so goes the Muslim world. Okay? So all the culture, all the language, all the education, all the film industry, it all centers in Egypt, okay? So Egypt is a main hub, a main player to reach the other Islamic countries. Verse 24, it says, In that day Israel will be one of three with Egypt uh, in Assyria, a blessing. I might say a blessing. blessing. In the midst of the land whom the Lord shall bless, saying, Notice this. This is the Lord saying, Bless is Egypt, my people. Now, when have you ever seen God call a nation his people? Besides Israel, right? But God calls Egypt his people. Blessed, be, blessed is Egypt, my people, Assyria, the work of my hands, in Israel, my inheritance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so as we... So I shared some of those things this morning. This is, this is the really point that I want to get to, and that is this, is that uh, what, I'm, what I'm watching besides, you know, nations and besides leaders of nations, what I'm watching is I'm watching God's people come into their callings, come into new assignments, come into new places that they never even imagined that they would be in. I could, I could spend all day long talking to you about people that I know that what they're doing today is not what they were doing six months ago. I have a good friend of mine who for years and years and years, uh, we would go to a minister's conference and he's a pastor and people, different men of God, different ones would come and they would always prophesy, hey, I see you uh, running for political office. And, you know, at one time he kept trying to crack the door, crack the door, okay? I mean, it's going on for 18 years. And just the other day, you know, he's, he's, uh, uh, you know, he's at a community uh, meeting, you know, and with people he didn't really know. And he was sitting across the table from this guy. And this guy kept looking at him. And the guy kept going, have you ever thought about running for political office, you know? It's like, yeah, I've heard that a dozen times, Okay. And so the guy says, well, what do you believe? You, you know, what do you stand for? And they, they had this whole discussion. And the, and, the, and the guy says, well, you know what? I'm, I'm a billionaire. Oh. He says, I kind of like you. In fact, I really like you. I like how you stand. I like, I, you got something about you. I, I'm drawn to you. He said, uh, you know, listen up. Uh, let me ask you a question. Um, so you've looked into this, right? Oh, yeah, I've looked into this. How much is it going to cost, you know, for, for you to run for, for that Senate seat? And my friend said, well, I mean, I've done my homework. I think it's going to cost like $50 million. And the, and the billionaire said, oh, no, no, it's, it's to, to unseat those two that are in those positions, no, it's, it's going to take more like $150 million. So my friend's like, oh, oh, Okay. <laughs> So the guy says, well, stand up. So he stood up, and the billionaire stood up. He said, listen, I want to shake your hand because when you need the $150 million, you call me and we'll have it. Wow. That'll change your day. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll have a dream. You'll go from having a dream that seems impossible to all of a sudden having a meeting, standing with a guy says, yeah, I'm going to promise you $150 million. That'll change your day. That'll change your destiny. That, you, that will put you on course for what God has for you. See, a lot of these things that are happening right now are all a setup for this new decade. This whole year has been a setup, right? I mean, the church is actually in a better place in a lot of different ways. We, we were forced, in a sense, to get out of the box and, and to become more creative, okay? We, we were forced to make some changes, okay? Uh, many of us, you know, uh, have spent more time with the Lord, right? And, the, and, the, and, and many people had to get back to their first love with Jesus Christ, okay? But, but so, so there are things that are in motion, things that... Uh, God has set that 
our, our setup for what is about to come. And so this morning, I want to encourage each and every person that's here. All right? God has a call on your life. God has a destiny for you. And I encourage you to align yourself with that call. You know, when I was 22 years of age, I found myself in a hospital dying of cancer. The doctor said I had two weeks or less to live. All right? I had a tumor that grew to the size of a basketball in three days. I saw everybody on my floor die. But I cried out to the Lord and I said, God, whatever you have for my life, whatever you, whatever you want to do, I submit my life to you. And I told the Lord, I said, if you'll heal me, if you'll get me out of this hospital bed and, and raise me up and give me another life, another chance, listen, I'll serve you all the days of my life. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll speak to you whoever you want me to speak to. Okay. And sure enough, the Lord healed me and raised me up and gave me another chance. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that we serve a God of second chances? And so sooner or later, all of us will be faced with the call. And you're never too old and you're never too young. And what I'm seeing right now is that you might have been a Sunday school teacher for years and you might think that your, your days are fulfilled, but I tell you what, as long as you have breath in your lungs, I tell you, we're entering a new season, a, a new period, a new, a new time where God wants to use each and every single person, okay, to, to, be, uh, to be part of his kingdom, to reach more people for the kingdom. And guess what? There's only people that you can reach. There's only people that, 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 that will hear you, what you have to say, right? And, and so each one of us has a purpose, has a place, has a destiny, and has a call that God has uh, for them. What's interesting about the Apostle Paul is that he, he struggled. He had this great conversion, but then he struggled finding what the call of God was on his life. All right? And so he, in the, in the early part of Acts, he kept going uh, to, to try to reach the Jews. So every time he would go into a new city, he would, he would, he would go he'd, right into the synagogue because he wanted to reach the Jews. He had a heart for the Jews. And what did the Jews do? They threw him out of town. <laughs> you know, they, they stoned him and left him for, for dead, you know. And so finally, in Acts 17, he comes into Athens. Uh, and then they would go, oh, we want, we want to hear what you have to say. I don't know if you've ever felt like, you know, you had something to say and nobody wanted to hear it. <laughs> and then he left Athens and he went to Corinth. And wait, that's where we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 where it says, When I came to you, I didn't come with excellence of speech or of giving you man's wisdom, but I came with a demonstration of the spirit and power. And so when he came into Corinth, he came into that Gentile city, he found his place. He found his calling. And when he arrived in that place, all of a sudden there was the grace of God, the favor of God, the, the provision, the protection of God. Everything showed up when Paul got in the right place. And so I want to tell you this morning is that when we find our place, when we get into that place that God has called us, it'll be a place of favor. It'll be a place of grace. It'll be a place of great provision. Uh, get great protection, that, that everything will fall into place when we find the place that God has for us. How many of y'all believe that this morning? Amen. I want to ask the question today. Does anybody feel like you're just supposed to spend the rest of your life on a shelf? Is there anybody here today that you feel like, listen, there's more for you to do for the kingdom? How many of y'all believe that this is a special season that we're in, that this is a new decade? That, that what has happened prior is almost meaningless compared to what is about to happen because God says, behold, I'm going to begin to do us some new things, some new assignments, so, some, some new places, some new giftings that I have. And so, um, so I'm gonna, uh, I want to make just an invitation this morning. If you're here this morning and you just say, you know what, there's more. I know there's more. Some of you might have an inkling of what that more is. 
But many of you may have said, you know, I have no clue. I really, I know there's more, but I just have no clue what that is. Guess what? You're in, you're in good company. <laughs> Paul struggled with it. If Paul struggled with it, guess what? You know, we, we can also struggle with those same things. But I believe this morning is a morning for a setup. God's wanting to set you up and put you into some new places. And so if you're here today and you just know that there's more for you to do and you, you want to say, Lord, here I am. Listen, I want to, I want to be ready for this, this new decade. I want to be ready for this new assignment. You know, listen, there's many of us, we've already spent half or two-thirds of our life. I realize, you know what? I don't want to waste any more time. I want to redeem the time. Amen. I want to be about my father's business. I don't want to be just doing what I want to do, but I want to be doing what God wants me to do. Yes. And so if you're here today and that's your heart, that's what you feel, and you go, I identify, I know this is a new season. It's a new season on God's timetable. And it doesn't matter what my age, it doesn't matter what my abilities, it doesn't matter what my giftings seem like or look like in the natural. You know what? I want to answer the call. I want to do exactly what God wants me to do. And I want to be in the place that God has for me. If that's you, I want you to go ahead and stand on your feet this morning. I pray that every single person would answer the call. I pray that every one of us, that would be our heart, that that, that would be our desire. And I want to just add on to that. And the Lord just said to me, he says, I'm, I, will, I will fix that which needs to be fixed. That's the word of the Lord. I will fix that which needs to be fixed. So if that marriage needs to be fixed, guess what? The Lord says, I am fixing it. If, if you need the resources... If you need the finances, if you need to get out of debt, the Lord says, I will fix that which needs to be fixed so that you can be in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. So whatever needs to be fixed, sometimes we, we just, you know, we just almost like disqualify ourselves, you know? Well, I'd have to have this, and I'd have to have that, and then this thing over here, and then my kids, and then my family, and the, and, and the Lord just said, oh, 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 listen, I know the season that we're in, and I know how to fix everything that needs to be fixed. Come on now, church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So forget all of that, and just Surrender and answer the call this morning. Everybody just lift up your hands in this place. I want to pray for every single person this morning. Father, we just thank you this morning for the move of your spirit. The unction of the spirit. Thank you for touching every heart, every mind, every person today. I, 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 know, I know that people are... It, this, this message bears witness with their spirits. And so, Lord, this morning as we lift up holy hands in this place, we lift up hands as a sign of surrender. As a sign of surrender to do exactly what you have us to do, to hear your voice and to obey your voice. Everybody say this to me. Say, Father God, Father God I come before you today. I surrender my will to your will. I surrender my plans to your plans. Lord, put me on course for your kingdom, for your kingdom purpose. Put me on course. Put me in the place where I'm in the right place, doing the right thing. Lord, Lord, I surrender, I surrender everything, to you. everything to you. I believe, I believe you, have good things ahead. you have good things ahead. This is a supernatural time. This is a new decade that will be like no other. So Lord, so Lord put, me on put me on course to do, to do whatever you want me to do. 
thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord for, saving me, for saving me, healing me, healing me providing, for me, providing for me, delivering me, delivering me and setting me free. Setting me free. Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, not my will, not my will but, your will be done. but your will be done. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. Come on, church, let's give a big shout this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on, let's give it up. Let's give it up this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pastor John. We're going to show a video here. I guess they got that all queued up, ready to go. And um, we'll watch the video, and then I'll come back, and um, we'll uh, close things out. So. I feel it in my bones, you're about to move I feel it in the wind, you're about to ride in You said that you would pour your spirit out You said that you would fall on sons and daughters So come
Well, praise God. That was uh, wonderful watching that. You know, we're, we're so used to seeing uh, videos of uh, Columbia and, uh, um, the, uh, and uh, um, so I had to keep reminding myself, that's not Columbia, that, that's a Muslim nation <laughs> where they're having church. And so we are so blessed to, to be a part of, of what God's doing in the, in the end times, in the last days. So um, I'm going to ask for the ushers to come up here and um, have you uh, get, come on up here front and they're going to pass the offering plate and um, as, as you feel led.